All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Achachwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, who rule well and citations to the elect. Okay, all you brothers and sisters out there, are are you uh, members of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai's remnant of the house of Israel? All right, wherever you may be. This is Brother Lawyer from Great Most of Miami. And, um, hey, man, I want to do a, a lesson on, you know, miracles, man. All right. And, um, in this lesson, I'm going to hit it from a, a certain angle. I'm going to go into it from a certain angle um, based off of, you know, the current um, Mississippi water crisis, okay, in Jackson, Mississippi. You know, as it's been, uh, you know, being... Uh, told in the recent news, you know, the people who live in Jackson, Mississippi, uh, don't have access to, uh, you know, clean water. All right. They turn on their water faucets and uh, contaminated dirty water comes out. Okay. So they're not able to shower, uh, cook oftentimes, um, you know, have access to clean, so-called clean um, water you know, through the pipes and faucets that run through their house. So, uh, you know, they've been having to uh, get, you know, water from uh, Esau's, um, you know, distribution stores, such as, you know, the local grocery stores, Walmart and stuff like that. Um, you know, and so that's what's going on over there. All right. And we know, um, you know, it's all, of course, uh, set up by Yahweh Bashim Shai through Esau. Okay. All right. We know that Esau sets these things up to put hell on our people. All right, and to have our people run to him for help, okay? Um, but, you know, with all of that being said, as I was thinking about uh, recently, as I was thinking about this uh, whole water crisis situation, um, you know, the Spirit kind of led me to think about different instances in the Scriptures where our people were in situations where the water that they had access to was contaminated, Okay? All right, and that's why I say uh, this lesson is going to be about miracles uh, from this angle because, A, we read in the scriptures during the time of Moses and even during the time of Elisha, you know, where our people were in an area where the water was contaminated and the Lord used uh, prophets, okay, men of the Lord, to purify the water so that they could drink, okay? All right. And, um, you know, just other scenarios as well. You know, um, this is just one example that I could use. Oh, so I can. Uh, this is just one example that I could use, um, you know, of, of, you know, water. A situation with water, okay? There were also other situations where, you know, our people were in areas where there was no water, okay? And the Lord you know, through a prophet, um, you know, performed a miracle so that water could be accessible uh, for them to drink, okay? And as the scriptures say, man, you know, my servant shall drink, all right? And that's in Isaiah 65 and um, verse 13. One second. All right, Isaiah 65 and 13, it says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Okay, all right, behold, my servant shall drink, for, uh, shall sing, sorry, uh, shall, shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. Okay. All right, so, hey, man, you know, despite the fact that, you know, there is a current uh, water crisis going on, um, and, you know, this is just, this is not an isolated event. We know about Flint, Michigan, and we know various parts of the earth under Esau's rulership, the water is contaminated, all right? Um, or there's just a scarcity of water in general, all right, because of droughts and so on and so forth. But despite all of that, the Lord is going to, uh, make a way, all right, for his servants, all right, his remnant to have access to food and water, okay, and to be joyous in the times of trouble, okay. Matter of fact, uh, the brothers in Mississippi, in Jackson, Mississippi, 
um, which I'm not sure if all the brothers are actually, you know, live in Jackson. But the brothers in Mississippi have been, um, you know, according to the report that they've given. And, you know, as we see them out still being diligent, they're doing just fine in the midst of all of this. OK. All right. But again, you know, as times get rougher and you, you have more situations like this pop up, whether it be just a lack of water or polluted water, the Lord's going to have scenarios such as what we read about in Exodus chapter 15. OK. And. Um, and 22. OK. All right. Um, manifest. OK. Through the men of the Lord. OK, matter of fact, let me go to Romans chapter 15 and four. It says, uh, for whatsoever things are written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comforts of the scriptures might have hope. OK, so everything we read about in the scriptures from the past are right, they're written uh, there for us to learn from. OK, all right. To draw lessons from and so for us to be comforted and have expectation and hope in future times. OK, and hard times, actually. All right. The scriptures tell us about perilous times, how they shall come. OK, harsh, savage, OK, hard to undertake. OK, those types of times are coming to the earth. And matter of fact, not are they not that they are coming, they are here. OK, so we read about scriptures and scenarios in the scriptures such as Exodus chapter 15. All right. And we can relate that to the times we're living in now. All right. Where there's a lack of water or where the water is contaminated and we can have hope that the Lord will provide a miracle. OK, a similar miracle. All right. In future time periods, man, because that which is then is now. OK, but going to Exodus 15 and uh, 22, it says, so Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea and they went out into the wilderness of Shur and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah for they were bitter. OK, so the waters were bitter. They were, you know, probably dirty, contaminated, you know, polluted, whatever, however you want to say it. OK. All right. They were not drinkable. OK, therefore is the name of it called Marah, which Marah means bitter. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, what shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord and the Lord shewed him a tree. OK. All right. So the Lord gave Moses his wisdom. OK. To know which tree. All right. Would be useful to help purify the water. OK. Which when he cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance and there he proved them and said if thou wilt diligently hearken unto the voice of the lord thy god and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandment and keep all his statutes i will put none of these diseases upon thee which i have brought upon the egyptians for i am the lord that healeth you okay all right so the lord gave moses his wisdom all right to use a tree okay all right, a certain tree, a certain plant, okay, to help purify and sweeten the water that was bitter so that Israel could drink, all right, while they were in this wilderness where there was no water, okay, where water where water was scarce, okay, and situations like this going to help fulfill the scripture, you know, um, where it is written, okay, in Isaiah chapter 10, all right, um, Isaiah chapter 10 and um, verse 20, it says, and it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but they shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth. Okay. All right. So when situations start getting tough, hey, the Lord's going to provide a way for our people to be sustained so they don't have to rely and depend, okay, on their allies who seek to destroy them. Okay. All right. In this case, Esau, Edom. All right. As they're as our people are doing now. OK, going to Esau for water, you know, for clean water hey, and the times to come. Hey, the Lord's going to make a way to where, you know, we don't have to uh, go to Esau, you know, to, pr to prepare or to sustain ourselves in situations like this. Now, the Lord's going to perform miracles and mighty deeds and works so that we can be, uh, you know, you know, sustain without Esau's influence in his hand. OK. All right. This is Isaiah 10 and 20. In the NLT, the New Living Translation, I believe that's um, what that stands for. It says, and that day the remnant left in Israel and the survivors in the house of Jacob will no longer depend on allies who seek to destroy them. But they, they will faithfully trust the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Okay. Now let's go to 2 Kings uh, chapter uh, 2. Okay. All right. Um, 
And and I'll just go to uh, verse 19. All right, it says, And the men of the city said to Elisha, now this is after Elijah was taken up, and Elisha is his understudy, his successor, right? All right, so the Lord is about to perform a work through Elisha, all right, to show that he's dealing with Elisha, okay? All right, it says, And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, I pray thee the situation of the city is pleasant, as my Lord seeth, but the water is not, and the ground is barren. Okay? All right, so now people are coming to Elisha because Elisha is the, the main prophet now. All right? Like they used to go to Elijah for different situations. Now they're going to Elisha. Okay? So they're come, really coming to him because, hey, they're like, you know, hey, this city, it's a nice city. It looks beautiful, you know, but the water, is, you know, it's bad. You know, the land doesn't bear any fruit. You know? You know? Uh, <laughs> how would I say you know, hey, work, you know, work, work a miracle or something. Help us out. <laughs> you know how Jake is. <laughs> and in, in verse 20, it says, and he said, uh, bring me a cruise and put salt there. And, and they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the springs of the waters and cast the salt therein and said, thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren in the land. So the waters were healed unto this day according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. Okay, so there you go, man. All right, the Lord um, <laughs> gave Elisha the wisdom. All right, um, all right, and, and, and Elisha prayed. All right, he called, you know, he called upon the Lord, I'm sure. All right, and the Lord worked through Elisha so that the water could be healed and purified. All right, so that the water could be purified so that the land uh, would be, uh, would no more be barren. Okay, so the water would not be contaminated again, man. OK, so if situations like this are going to happen. I believe in these last days, man, you know, and it's a it may that may very well be why the brother why the brothers in Mississippi are stationed there. You never know amongst many other reasons, man. OK. All right. You know, we got to really think big uh, concerning this faith. All right. Hey, anything is possible with the Lord, man. We don't these scriptures and these accounts in the scriptures, you know, are not just written there just for us to read. And that's it, man. OK. All right, we we a we serve a, a we serve a, a power a, that that is great beyond you know the, the 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 might of man. Okay, all right. The Lord created water. Okay, all right. He created heat. He created snow. All right, all these different elements, man. And a you know a through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Shai, the Lord can use His men and pour out His spirit upon men. All right, to have mastery over these elements too. All right, for the benefit of the body and ultimately for the praise of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Okay. All right, Second Ezra chapter one, verse twenty-two. It says, "Thus saith the Almighty Lord, when you were in the wilderness, uh, in the rivers of the Amorites, being a thirst and blaspheme my name, I gave you not fire for your blasphemies, but cast a tree in the water and made the river sweet." Okay. All right. So there you go, man. All right, the Lord this. This is the things the Lord did for us, man, and used to do for us. And, he, you know, he's going to do things like that again, man, okay? All right, that's why the scripture saved many saviors, okay? That's why the script, that's why Yahweh Shai said, um, greater works shall you do because I go unto my father. That's why these things are written, man, okay? All right, the works that I do shall you do also. All right, these shall be the signs that shall follow them that, you know, believe on my name. That's all there for a reason, man, okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 15 it says that which hath been is now and that which is to be hath already been and God required that which is past okay um and I'm gonna close out with this Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 all right it says and I will give unto thee the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven okay all right now Yahweh spoke this unto uh, Peter okay all right, which we believe 
that Peter is a King David and the reincarnation. Okay. All right. And a the scriptures talk about the house of David, the tabernacle of David, uh, David being risen up. Okay. All right. And a, the prophets have a, a certain favor with the Lord. Okay. It's Lord, a Yahweh Shai said, what serve ye shall ask in my name? That will I do, man. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Okay. All right. Um, Revelation chapter 11 says, these have power to shut heaven that are reign not in the days of their prophecy. Okay. All right. So you're going to have uh, situations where, yes, the Lord's going to give brother spiritual power to, to bring plagues upon the earth or plagues upon people. Okay. And in other cases, the Lord's going to have it to where the, uh, you know, brothers pray to remove plagues off of people. And again, scriptures, there's plenty of scriptures on that, on that, plenty of scriptures on that. Okay. All right. Uh, for example, um, you got Moses in, in the Exodus, all right, the Exodus story where, you know, the Lord had used him to bring forth plagues upon Egypt and then he prayed and the plagues were taken away. Okay. So all of that being said, man, a hey, Lord willing, this video was edifying, man. Just wanted to put that out there, man. It's been on my spirit for a minute to uh, hop into this lesson. I've just been a bit um, under the weather, but a hey, call lawyer, like about Shemal Shai. Uh, regardless, man, the Lord is going to get, uh, is going to do mighty works in these last days, man. Okay. All right. So I just wanted to put that spirit out there, man. You know, um, think big, man. Think big, Yasharala. All right. Nothing's impossible with the Lord. Um, hey, uh, and Shalom. Call Allah, Yimlai, Abashim, Yahushai. Double honors to the elder apostles, great millstone. And salutations to the elect. Kwame Yasharala. And above the ball.